Hello, this is Virtual the Chess Noob, learning and having fun with chess. Today I happen to try out a new gambit, the Leonhardt Gambit, on two consecutive games. Paul Leonhardt, and that's his photo from Wikipedia on the right, was a master level German chess player from the early 1900s. I happened to see a video on YouTube on this gambit some time ago, but remember almost nothing from it, and certainly none of the theory. It becomes available after one of the most common lines in the Scandinavian defence. I did terribly in both games, but happened to win the second due to my opponent blundering in the middle game. However, on review, it seemed like I had some significant winning chances straight out of the opening, and this is against opponents stronger than me who chose to play the Scandinavian against e4. I think that this makes it a potentially useful gambit. Please enjoy! So let's have a quick look at the first game. Review first. Uh, you know, I played terribly in this game. Pretty stable, and then bang, you know, uh, I made a blunder, which, um, you know, opponent played excellently, didn't they? 93%. All right, but in the context of uh, of that sort of terrible game for me, let's let's have a look at the uh, let's have a look at the opening in particular. Let's move on to the analysis. All right. Now I played white uh, as expected. E4, opponent played a Scandinavian defense, which is d5. I capture, capture back with queen, knight c3 with attack on the queen. Uh, and in, very common um, with the Scandinavian, especially once you're sort of in the 1200s, 1300s, uh, is queen a5. Now the next move here is, uh, which starts the Leonhardt gambit, is b4 with an attack on the queen, uh, but that pawn is hanging. Now stockfish 12 at depth 30 gives a minus 0.3, but it's interesting that um, sort of analysis with stockfish 14 with a neural network actually rates it at much more equal. Um, so this move is actually not that bad. It does slightly advantage black, but it's definitely not bad. So the best move for black is in fact to capture the gambit of pawn, which is the expectation, and now rook b1, uh, again attacking the queen, uh, but all uh, pressuring the pawn on b7 and also having command of the semi-open b-file. Opponent plays the best move, which is queen back to d6, and in this uh, and in and in this game, I then played bishop b5 with check. I wasn't entirely sure uh, what would be the best move. Uh, opponent now decides to block with bishop, bishop d7, uh, and it's an accuracy, and you will notice the evaluation is now favoring white, it's favoring me, so that's very interesting. So this is a person who of course plays a Scandinavian, uh, I suspect um, this, the Leonhard gamut just simply doesn't come up that often. Now in this game, um, uh, what I did next was to play queen f3, sort of thinking that, you know, that, that pawn on c7 looks very soft now, uh, and then, you know, the, the rook is potentially trapped. Um, now from Stockfish's perspective, it's better to just straight up capture that, uh, to straight up capture that bishop, so I'll know that for next time. Opponent decides to capture, uh, capture the bishop first, and in this position I made a greedy blunder. So I captured, queen captured, uh, captures pawn, thinking I could then sort of uh, whack that uh, whack that rook. Of course that doesn't work because the opponent can then move their uh, move their bishop out of attack, so at the moment being attacked by two pieces, and also defend uh, defend their rook with an x-ray, uh, forcing me to basically have to move my queen. Uh, so um, so the best move is to just straight up capture that uh, that bishop. But I didn't see that in the game. I was you know, sort of in between. So I think having a morning tea from work. So I captured, and that was the blunder. So substantially advantageous to uh, to uh, to black now. But you can see that if I captured, it's a very substantial um, benefit for white because of course you know chains attack to the queen. Opponent does what is expected. Here, I wasn't too sure what to do. Um, it's interesting. You know, I should have just whacked, whacked the rook, but you know, I'm compounding error with error. <laughs> so queen to to c8 with check. Uh, it doesn't really work. Opponent sort of blocks with queen, which is of course necessary. I thought I had something there, but no, this is just dumb. I basically now also lose my rook as well. So at this point, I had 
you know, minus eight. I'd basically given up. I'd do a few more moves, but, you know, opponent is basically just trying to liquidate my pieces. And, you know, I, and now I even pin myself. So here I actually resigned, give up the game. Uh, good game for the opponent. But interesting, you know, uh, there was some good chances for me in the opening. Let's have a look now at the second game. So let's start off with having a look at the review. So in this game, I do better than the last one. Uh, so much more equal to my opponent. I still make a fairly big blunder, make, makes me practically losing uh, for most of the middle game, but the opponent blunders right back, which puts me ahead and I happen, just happen to win. But some very interesting stuff here if you look at sort of the opening. So let's move on now to the analysis. Um, so here I wasn't expecting to be playing uh, another Leonhardt Gambit. So I start with e4. Oh, opponent played d5. All right, let's play the Scandinavian. And um, I think, oh, an opportunity to play the Leonhardt again. This was a this was a consecutive game. So uh, this was this was literally the next game with another random opponent. So I thought, great, I'll apply. What I learned very briefly because I did a very brief analysis after that first game. Um, so they capture rook b1. Uh, and queen d6. So this clearly is a very natural sequence for most people. So here I now knew that d4 was a very good move. So depending on the engine at what depth and whether it's Stockfish 12 or Stockfish 14 with the neural network, um, knight f3 or d4 are both rated very, very highly. So at higher depths, in fact, it gets very close to equality, close to zero, and it sort of fluctuates between, between the two, which one thinks it, it's best. So either of them are, are good. So uh, I, like, I like d4, I suppose, so I chose to play that move in this, uh, in this game. Opponent immediately blunders. So that apparently is a blunder. B6, look at that, plus 2.7. So potentially, you know, if I knew what I was doing here, I would be at a quite a substantial advantage. So the best move is in fact uh, knight b5 with an attack on the queen, and that's a very natural move. Here I wasn't entirely sure what to do, so I I, I pushed uh, I pushed uh, the pawn to d5, which was a mistake, as you can see. Opponent plays um, bishop b7 um, as a fianchetto. Uh, I here now play bishop b5 with check. Uh, they play knight d7 um, to block the check, and you know, still inequality. I now play knight ge2. Knight f3 would have been better. So again, good to know. And you know, I I'm sort of losing my advantage now. Uh, I play. Uh, bishop f4, thinking that I could maybe chase the queen around, um, but I'm not successful. You know, you know that really doesn't work here. Clearly, given that you know I've only got one defender and they've got multiple attackers, so queen takes, forced to trade, and at the end of this sort of transformation, it's not looking good for me. So the opponent still has my three minor pieces: the bishop pair and a knight. I only have my knights, uh, and uh, and they're also. Uh, up a pawn as well. So definitely sort of losing out of that opening, but very interesting. So again, I'm doing this, not expecting to win, but to explore, uh, so explore this gambit, you know, haven't really not looked at, at very much theory. So definitely in both this game and the last game, the natural moves from the opponent actually led to some real potential good chances for white, which is very interesting to know. Here I move uh, rook d1 with check, forcing the uh, forcing the king back to e8. I now uh, I now short castles. They play e6. Uh, I now centralize my other rooks. So rook f e1. So lining it up potentially with the with the king, which of course pins that pawn. Opponent plays. Uh, Bishop b4, uh, which, but of course I can block with that pawn to c3, defended by that knight. Uh, opponent plays bishop a5, so look, very, very winning for black at the moment, almost plus eight. I play, uh, I play knight d4, um, now potentially thinking that maybe there'll be an attack on that, on that bishop, at least that's a threat anyway, and that bishop is a bit trapped at the moment. Uh, the opponent, however, plays bishop b uh, d5, which of course uh, disallows that square and also attacking that pawn. Move the pawn forward. Uh, opponent plays e7, um, which basically, uh, yeah, so, so, so that's potentially a good move 
uh, as well. So the other move I've potentially got here is I can sort of move uh, knight to f5, uh, that pawn is pinned so I can't capture and then I have a potential attack on the g7 pawn. Uh, I still have that at the moment and but by moving that king forward the king now defends that pawn. So good move by the opponent. Have to move the knight back now of course because that pawn is no longer pinned. Opponent brings their knight forward to b5. So opponent is responding very, very well. Here, um, the, um, you know, Stockfish reckons to just to trade pieces. Ugh. I didn't really want to trade pieces here because that would definitely be the death uh, of me given uh, that the opponent is up a full piece. I thought maybe there was a fork there that was good, willing to trade given that I've still got an attack on the bishop. So they take that bishop, they capture, accept, so accept the trade of that pawn for the knight. Um, so at least now uh, it, it's uh, it's sort of a, the, the knight pair uh, versus the rook pair with the bishop. Now the rooks are still relatively undeveloped. Um, that bishop is under threat. My knights are, are out and about. And knights are pretty tricky. You know, they, they're, they're hard to see, potentially can fork things with it. So I thought, yeah, you know, I've still got a chance here, still got a chance here. Now the opponent now uh, makes the move bishop h3. And I thought that he, that bishop was quite possibly uh, could be trapped. So I brought knight back to c3. Opponent uh, cent uh, centralizes one of their rooks, so rook hd8, and now knight e4 with check. King moved out of the way, so king e7, and here I thought things were potentially uh, looking uh, looking okay for me because I now have uh, knight g5 attacking that bishop, but the bishop can't go here because that square is defended. Bishop can't go here, that square is defended, and once I capture, that pawn remains pinned to the king again. Uh, and obviously the, uh, the, the bishop can't capture its own pawn. Uh, bishop can't come here, king, king captures, can't go here, king or rook captures. So I thought I have captured that bishop. So I was very proud with that move. The opponent um, uh, sort of sort of moves their, uh, their bishop to g4, allows capture, so that's good. They make now a good move, so you know, potential sort of fork um, of my knight and pawn. I capture that pawn, they capture back. So, you know, clawing back a little bit of the advantage. Uh, I now play uh, knight e5, uh, and my thought here was there's a potential check, uh, potential capture, and there, you know, that. You know, I thought that maybe they will move that rook out of the way, and they did. Um, however, you know, it's interesting that Stockfish didn't like that move. It preferred that move. Uh, and I think the logic here with that move was, um, yeah, so with that, if that knight was still in that position, that's guarded by, the, by that rook, and the, uh, and the knight had a potential attack on that pawn, given that it's also defended by the other us by the other knight. However, they move the king out of the way. Here, I capture that free uh, free pawn. Uh, they captured the, the rook and they lost sight that that rook was now attacked. So now I capture, so now I have knight and rook versus, uh, versus rook. We each, um, now they've got four pawns, I've got three. However, the extra piece probably makes a pretty big difference. And so they actually just opted to resign straight up here. So. Happened to win, um, a complete accident, I think. Opponent made sort of a one move blunder, wins the win. So good game with the opponent, um, GG. What was interesting to me with the Stockfish evaluation is that this gambit isn't even that objectively bad. Playing b4, attacking the queen, and gambiting that pawn gives an evaluation of negative 0.1, slightly favoring black, but basically equal. And this seems to be relatively forcing. The queen accepting the gambit by capturing the pawn is the only good move for black, with other queen moves giving an important advantage to white. As I kind of like gambits, I think I'll be playing this more in the future. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching!